Hello, and welcome to this quick tutorial about Melel. Today we're going to get into Notes, one of the most impressive features in Melel and in the cosmos at large. Notes are separate pieces of text attached to the main text, providing notes, comments, explanations, citations, and anything else that is interesting, enlightening, or relevant, but diverges from the main thread of discussion in the text. A note has three main parts, the reference symbol, which is a number, symbol, or letter that appears in the main text following the word or sentence they refer to, the note symbol, which is the symbol preceding the text of the note, and the note text itself. As we shall see, Melel provides you with a simple and consistent way to control any part of the note in minute detail. Melel currently supports three types of notes. One is notes at the bottom of the page, where the note text appears aligned to the bottom of the page in which the reference symbol appears. Another type of notes appears at the bottom of the text. The note will be located on the page where the reference symbol appears, but at the end of the text on that page. The third type of notes and notes will appear in a special section at the end of the document. A MLL document may contain an unlimited number of note streams. Any note belongs to a certain stream, and this stream dictates the numbering of reference and note symbols, the note's location, and other attributes. Later on, we'll tell you more about note streams. To insert a footnote, place the insertion point where you want the reference to be and choose Insert, Note, Footnote. Melel will create a new, empty note and place the insertion point within it. You can type and edit the note text just as you would edit any other text. When we choose Select All, the entire note text is selected. You can also insert images, tables, text boxes, and more into notes. The only part of the note you cannot edit directly within the note text is the note symbol. This is automatically done by Melel to keep things in order. We'll see later on how to control the symbol's attributes. To go back from the note to the place where the reference to the note was inserted, press the Escape key. To insert an endnote, place the insertion point where you want the reference to be and choose Insert, Note, Endnote. Melel will jump to the end of the document and create a new endnote. After typing the note, you can go back to the reference to the note by pressing the Escape key. Of course, locating an endnote in a galaxy far, far away on page 534 may prove a daunting task. But you can do that very simply by double-clicking the reference symbol and jump right to the endnote. And then press the Escape key or double-click the note symbol to go back to the reference. To delete a note, select its reference and press Delete. Melel will take care to renumber the notes that follow the deleted note. To move a reference to a note, select it and then choose Edit, Cut. Position the insertion point where you want it to be and choose Edit, Paste. Use Copy to copy the note and duplicate it. You can also drag the reference like you would with any other piece of text. Melel will make sure the notes are numbered correctly in all those scenarios. Melel allows you to control the way notes look and the way they are laid out. All the important attributes are accessible via the Edit Note Attributes sheet. The notes in this document use Arabic numerals. Let's change this to Roman numerals. Choose Insert, Note, Edit Note Attributes to open the Attributes sheet. At the right hand side of the sheet, you can see the section that controls how the reference symbols are numbered. Let's choose Roman from the Type pop-up menu. That took care of the reference symbol. Now, 
Let's choose Roman with the Type pop-up menu under Note symbol. Press OK. And there are our notes, all numbered just the way Julius Caesar would have liked it. Period. Which is a problem. As you can see, the note number is followed by a period. That was fine when we were using Arabic numerals. Now, not so much. So, let's go to our Attributes sheet and re-examine the attributes under Note Symbol. As mentioned earlier, Note Symbol is the note mark or numbering that appears next to the note. And this is what we wish to change. As you can see, under the Format pop-up menu, it shows Number plus a period and a tab. Let's change this to None plus tab. Press OK and there you have it. Just the way Julia Agrippina likes it. No period. Now the note text itself looks a bit smallish. Let's make it bigger. Under Edit Note Attributes, we'll find the text attributes of the note under Note Text Style. Let's press the Character Attributes button to display the Character Attributes popover. As you can see, this popover allows us to control just about any character attribute, from font, to color, to face. At the moment, we're just interested in making the font size bigger. So let's just do that. Click outside the Character Attributes popover to hide it. And press OK. Now the character attributes were changed in all notes. Well, the font is bigger now, but the line spacing got a little bit tight. Let's change the line spacing. In the Edit Note Attributes sheet, we can find, under Note Text Style, the Paragraph Attributes popover. Let's use it to change the line spacing from one line to 1.5 lines. Click outside the Paragraph Attributes popover to hide it and press OK. Now we're rolling. In addition to the numbering type, we can also set how notes will be numbered, and more importantly, when to reset the numbering of notes. Notes in this document are numbered so that the numbering will be reset with every page. Let's change it so that they will restart with every chapter. Open the Edit Note Attributes sheet. The Numbering pop-up menu now shows Restart Every Page. Let's change this to Restart Every Page Range. Press OK and voila! The numbers keep going up and get reset when a new chapter begins. We've promised to get back to note streams, and here we are. But before we learn how to use them, let's start by learning what is a note stream anyhow. A note stream is an object that contains several settings regarding notes, such as numbering type, numbering format, note text character style, and so on. Earlier, when we changed the numbering type from Arabic numerals to Roman numerals and made other changes, the changes were applied to a certain note stream. As every note in our document belongs to a note stream, all the notes in that stream changed following the changes we've performed on the note stream. Now, let's open the Edit Note Attributes sheet again. At the top left end of the sheet, we can see a list. This is the list of note streams defined for this document. The settings at the right end of the sheet will change based on the note stream selected. When we select different stream, the settings that relate to it will be displayed. Now we have the stream called footnote selected, and we can see that the notes here use Roman numerals as the numbering scheme. Let's select the endnote stream. As you can see, the notes in this stream use Arabic numerals. One of the attributes each stream has is position. If we check the EndNote stream, we can see that the position here is set to End of Document, that is EndNotes. With a Footnote stream, the position is Bottom of Page, that is Footnotes. It may look obvious, but the point here is that we can change the position of the notes. Every note stream, regardless of its name, 
can be a stream of footnotes or endnotes. All streams are created equal. Let's look at the Note submenu under the Insert menu. Every item here is a stream's name. Choosing an item will insert a new note belonging to that stream. Often, one stream of footnotes and one stream of endnotes is all you need, but sometimes you need to have two types of footnotes. For example, when the text has notes by the original author and additional notes by the editor or translator, as is often the case with translated text. To accommodate this, let's add a translator's note stream. In the Edit Note Attributes sheet, let's press the plus button to add a note stream. Let's call it Translator's Notes. The position is set to bottom of page, which is fine by us. And the numbering is reset with every page. So this also needs no modification. The numbering scheme though is set to Arabic, but we would like to have asterisk. So let's change the type under reference symbol and under note symbol too. We'll also set the format here to none plus tab. Now we can press OK. We can now insert a new note with a new stream by choosing Insert, Note, Translator's Note. As you can see, the translator notes are shown separately from the regular footnotes and have their own note and reference symbols. When we insert a note, we choose the stream under which it will be inserted. We are perfect, so this is always good, but sometimes we're not perfect and we need to move a certain note from one stream to another. In order to do that, we can right click the reference symbol and open the note stream submenu. The stream to which this note belongs is marked with a check mark. We can now choose a different stream and the note will be moved to that stream, get its attributes and be numbered relative to the other notes in the new stream. You can also move a note by right clicking within the note text. In addition to allowing us to switch a note's stream, the note stream submenu is also useful if you just want to check to which stream a certain note belongs. That's it for this quick tutorial. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.